is happening everybody willie here at the great outdoors happy man right now i'm gonna tell you what so far so good old bert i drove him back and forth to work this morning and he did perfectly fine that's a good thing we're going to go the rest of the week with him and see just how he does i am happy oh, i just can't begin to tell you how happy i am i can begin but we don't have enough time for me to tell you how happy i am let's just make time what do you say about that i am so happy yes i believe that this automobile is gonna is gonna be a little bit of a salvation for me i believe it's gonna be a good thing i'm hoping gonna get some tires for it yes definitely need some tires they're a little bit on the thin side it pulls to the right slightly so we need a he needs a front end alignment. I think some new tires and a front end alignment, and, and as far as roadworthy, I think we'll be okay for quite a while. At least I'm hoping so. Come on, everybody, let's get those fingers crossed. Fingers crossed, toes crossed, elbows crossed, everything crossed, and we will hopefully have a vehicle that'll take us on down the road to adventures unseen. <sighs> hey, but let me ask you something. When you got a bag of parts, you know, just a bag of random this is a Century 100B, what should be a Century 100B, and this is a bunch of random parts. Okay, when I say random parts, that's what they are, because I went through my parts lockup over here, and uh, me and Gary, is that right, me and Gary, or is it Gary and I? I think it's Gary and I. Gary and I, to say it correctly, were talking on the telephone, and I said, you know what, I think I got enough parts to probably put another 100B back together again. And he said, well, if you're missing anything, let me know. So I went through what I had, and I was missing a couple of things. A couple of major things, as a matter, a matter of fact. I was missing a frame, because this is this don't do you any good if you don't have a frame, and a cap. And even a frame won't do you any good if you don't have a cap, because then the line will not pass through the cap, the hole, and the line will not stick to the spinner, and the... It won't work just doesn't work it doesn't work i don't care how you try it. it's just not going to work so what i did was i said hey gary do you got a frame he said yeah i said you got a cap he said yeah he said tell me what you need and i'll get it to you and that's what he did hence that's right i said hence i don't know what hence means but i can tell you this when people say it it usually means it's what they said earlier means what you're looking at now or something like that hence let's just talk about hence just a minute here's what's in the box henceforth to who which and therefore we got one crank arm now i had a crank arm but it was in pretty foul shape so he sent me one he sent me a crank arm now there's a cap that's right it's a 100b cap with the slotted roof as you can see there and a frame which is what we really needed. Now, let's talk about these parts real quick. Where did these parts come from? I don't know. Some of it came from Gary. Some of it came from reels that I had. And what ends up happening is every single solitary part that is in this bag right here is from a different reel. That's right. A different reel. So that's what ends up happening sometimes. Uh, I think personally just my opinion that when you have a reel that the frame breaks on that's when reels become parts because otherwise you can pretty much replace you know a rotor or a crank arm or a pinion gear or a crank gear whatever and uh, you're okay there but when it comes down to a frame getting broken well sometimes I think when that happens that's when your reel becomes a parts reel now, I have a lot of parts. Gary has a lot of parts. Dan probably has a lot of parts. We have parts. And sadly, a lot of those parts 
are all from different reels. They're not just from one particular reel, which means, again, everything in that bag is from a separate reel. Each individual part came from a reel that is no longer in existence, which is sad. And I mean, it's a crying shame is what it is, but it happens. Otherwise, you know, there might be a lot of reels that we have that never got fixed because some reels didn't become parts reels. What are we going to do? Why am I going to continue talking about this? Well, I'm not going to continue talking about it. What we're going to do is take this frame, this cap, and maybe this better looking crank arm, and we're going to take these parts and put together a 100B. Why are we going to do that? Well, because we can. We can take one more reel and make it work again. Isn't that the objective? Is it not? It is, and that's what we're going to do. Then, once I get it all put back together and get it working, get some line on it, we're going to put it on a rod, and I'm thinking that maybe this weekend, that's what I'm thinking, this weekend, even though it's supposed to rain, we take Bert and our newly built 100B Century Johnson, set all that in reverse. I could have said B100 Century Johnson. Now, how come I can say stuff like that completely okay without having a problem and try to say it forward and I'll mess it all up? I know some of you probably have an answer, but keep it to yourselves because there's no need to hurt people's feelings here, specifically mine. Anyway, we'll take this 100B that we put together, Bert, and maybe take a trip out to the campground because I think, and here we go again, it's just my opinion, the campground is a decent distance to travel to, about 60, 61, 62 miles, and try some fishing. And there's something I've been wanting to try. I brought it up, so I might as well go ahead and just get it on out there. What I do with it? Oh gosh, it's way over here. Why did I put it so far away? Isn't it amazing how when we get old, six feet far away? There you go. This is the Zebco Delta, that's right, the Zebco Delta 2. Two. This, I think they call it the ZD2. Is that what this thing's called? It's a five bearing reel that we talked about earlier. I've already got it on a rod, ready to go. And let's give this thing a fling. Because I've heard stories going around the campfire that this was a better reel. This was a better reel than the newest Delta with all of its eight bearings or whatever the thing had. I can't remember. Let's find out if this one's better. Let's go, hey, take this thing to the lake, catch a couple fish, and then maybe we'll call Zebco and go, hey, what were you thinking? Why'd you stop making this? Anyway, that's enough of that nonsense. I'll get you down to the table here. Let's get this box out of here, and I'll get you down here, and we will take this thing and put it together and make us a functioning real. What do you say? A B100 Century Johnson. All right. Put these over here, this over here. Let's do this. Let's do this the way Grandma used to do with those butterscotch candies. Let's just do this. I haven't taken the line off that yet. What have I been doing all this time? We'll do that later. Meanwhile, we're not going to use this crank arm because it is kind of ugly. So let's go with the new crank arm, which I think is actually from, I think it's actually from a Citation because it looks a little bit longer. And if I'm not mistaken, and I could be, but I'm not, Gary told me it was from a Citation. So we're going to have a little bit longer crank arm on this thing than normal. Wow, that, that nut right there is really holding on good. Come back here. Stop playing. We don't have time for all that nonsense. Let's take that off. I didn't put any oil in there, so we got to take these screws out. Where's my screwdriver? Do, 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 do. The dome topped flatheads. I like them. It's They look a lot nicer. They have a bigger, uh, they take up more real estate. The head's a little bit bigger, and I think it's better for holding it together. I just think they look more classy to me. It's just me. Could be wrong, but I'm just saying. Just trying to create a little conversation. You got a problem with that? I'll set that there. That. Put it over top of the bowl here. Put a little earl on here. 
Look at that. What are we rubbing on? What's going on here? Seems to be all right. Feels okay. I have other ones. All right, let's get that new crank arm out. I say new, new er. Oh, wow. That's nice and silvery. The D is in pretty good shape there for the hole. Seems to be all right. Nut is a little dirty. I think I'm going to get it on here and then I'm going to clean it up. Most of this stuff was already cleaned up. I had cleaned it up previously, but I don't think I cleaned this nut. So we're going to take this wire brush I have in this drawer over here. Now we'll grab a paper towel here. Let's see if we can clean that up just a little bit. Look how dirty that nut was. I don't know why I didn't clean that. Now we'll take our frame here. Take a look at this gear here. This gear is not in the greatest of shape, but it is the best one I had. So that is the one we're going with. It's probably going to make a lot of noise. All right, let's get our pieces for our drag. Let's take that out of the way. We need this. We need this spring to go in here. And like I said, each and every single solitary one of these parts is to a different reel. Put that there. Get our screwdriver here. Now, we have a fully brass center section. And with our fully brass center section, there'll be a violin solo later on down the line. Gotta have your little clicker to die. Then we're gonna have one of these as a bottom piece here. Get on there. Get on there, there we go. This is a drag shoe, better known as. And we're going to put this as our drag bar. We'll stick that down there and try to get it caught. This is the center section for our drag. And it's going to slip right over top of the, I say it's going to slip, there it goes, right over top of that. Then we're going to put our other section, third and final section of our drag over top of this. Where's our crank section at? Here it is. Now we want this to be, we want this to be your typical, that's right, typical, if there is such a thing, spin cast reel. So I will, first I will put this fancy name plate on there. Now we can name this one if we want to, but it would help if the button was in there before that slid up there so easily. We're going with a solid white bigger button. Johnson Century 100B. That's the way you're supposed to say it, just in case you were wondering. Not B100 Century Johnson. There we go. I said it again so simply, I don't understand how I do that. All right, now we're putting that guy on there. Okay, we got that in there. Now we're going to put our fancy screws that I like so much, the flathead dome tops from the I Love Chrome collection. But you know what they say, Chrome don't bring fish home. They say that. I know there's people that think they don't, but they say that. Why is that screw not going in there? Okay, it's got a little bit of a grind. It's not bad. Okay, I'm back. Let's go to clean it again. Get that off there. How'd you even get on there? Let's get that in there and just take this steel wool and just clean this old funk out from Inside here where that line has been sitting for 111 years. This is all it takes just to get all the old corrosion and funk. What is still in there? There we go. Nice and shiny. And look how nice that is. Listen to how that, that's just, that's a happy, happy piece right there is what that is. Hairpin. Shove that on there. This is where all the line usually gets tangled up, right in here. Then we're going to put, Push the button, bring that shaft up. There we go. Then we're going to take the nut, put it on the top right there. While still pushing up, something's acting, something's acting up. Felt like my gear was skipping. And I'm not going to say it wasn't. It might have been because that gear wasn't very pretty. Because it does have a little bit of a growl, but it's because those teeth on that gear weren't perfect. That's how it is. Do we have reverse? Yes, we do. We have it locking in. 
spinning in both directions. We appear to be working okay now. Let's get our fancy new cap. That's a good looking cap. That's, that's a better looking cap than most of the caps I have. Here we are doing the thing. We took a reel that was, well, we had no reel. We built a reel out of parts. It's a growly. I'll probably have to get with Gary about a gear, but it, it's growly. As a matter of fact, it keeps feeling like it's getting off kilter or something. Okay, so through the chaos, um, I went through my other gears that were worser than the one that was in it to try to find something that maybe I could reverse or turn upside down or change or whatever and make it better than the one that was in there. And in the process of doing so, I did, didn't work. It's still loud, it still growls, um, but it seems to be acting right now. I may have prematurely turned the camera on. That could be it. That's fairly typical. Because anybody that gets on here and tells you that this stuff works every time is lying. It doesn't. Uh, you can sit here and take these things apart 15 or 20 times and cross your fingers and hope that it goes back together and works like it's supposed to. That looks like it's... So here's what we've done. Here's what I've done. It's not what we've done. It's what I've done. I have succeeded in something that I don't think I have ever truly succeeded in in all of the years that I have been building fishing reels or tearing apart fishing reels and putting them back together. I have succeeded in building the worst 100B I've ever built in my life. Despite the fact that it looks incredible. I have tried three different gear sets. I've tried three different uh, pinion shafts. I've tried spacers. I've taken spacers out, which these reels usually don't have spacers. I've done a little bit of everything. They're trying to make things work. And it just doesn't want it to work. It just, I mean, it works. Don't get me wrong. It works. And I could go fish with it. But no matter what I do, it just doesn't want to be good. It just wants to be usable, I guess is what you'd say. But here's the funny thing, if you want to call this a funny thing. I told Evan that I probably wasn't even going to put this video out because it's really depressing that this reel looks as good as it does and performs subpar. Now, I don't know what subpar means, but it doesn't perform well, okay? But it really, really looks nice. Uh, the gears are trying to go kind of over top of each other. I think I got it better than it was. I actually took my file, this triangular style file here, and got in between the gears and filed them where they were really so out of whack. And I reversed the gear, I turned it upside down to make it turn in a, the opposite direction of the way it's been turning for 100 years. And it's not bad, but it ain't great. I won't trash this video, but I will tell you that not every single one of these things go together beautifully. It just doesn't work. Um, me and Evan were talking earlier, and Evan said, well, you know, some parts just aren't going to jive together. You're taking parts from other reels and all that. But really, when you think about these things being put together, they're just parts in bins being put together. Okay, so here's something I want to talk about. This is something that was brought up that I want to just kind of throw what I feel, how I feel about this particular scenario. Okay, I was told, hey man, stop using these kids and old people reels, spin cast reels. Let's think about that for just a second. Let's actually, common sense wise, and intelligently think about this just a moment. Back in the day, when the spin cast reel was invented, all you really had to choose from in that time frame were these little guys, little bait casters. Now this is actually a pretty nice one. This is a, uh, a Fluger Akron that has a modern day release on the crank button when you cast it free spools and then when you pop it, just like a, basically like a new modern bait caster. But the ones before this guy, didn't have that technology. That was, it was the crank span, spun when you cast it, the crank spun, the whole nine yards. 
you really couldn't get a lot of distance out of those things and you had to really have some weight on it to even cast it very well. Well, if you couldn't use one of these, which did require a pretty high skill set, I would say, because I still stink with the darn things. So you had to have a pretty good level of confidence to heave one of these things and not spend the next 25 to 30 minutes untangling it just so you can cast it one more time and spend another 25 or 30 minutes untangling it. So if you couldn't use one of these, your next bet was the spinning reel. Now, this is a record, if you want to call it that, uh, or record, whichever one you want to say, one of the first bottom drag spinning reels that were invented. Very cool reel. It is a half bale. Very cool reel. I love using this thing. It's very fun to use. Um, but if you couldn't use a bait caster, you kind of moved in this route. Well, that was really the only two routes you had. Unless you wanted to use a cane pole and a bobber. And you really weren't going to cast very far. So, what do you do next? Well, someone comes up and says, I'm going to invent something that has a button on the back, and all you got to do is press it, hold it, and cast. I think people will buy it. Well, surely enough, they did. And there were all kinds of people making them. Zebco, Johnson, Shakespeare, and other off-the-wall companies like H.I. Titan and like uh, Arax, the Eldorado that I used that Dan sent to me not too long back. Those reels, I don't, personally, and this is a personal opinion, they weren't trying to corner the market on old people and kids in that time frame. The metals like the alloys and the aluminums and the steel and the stuff that they used in these reels, again, they weren't really trying to corner the market on kids. These were designed well and made well more for the adults. But now, in today's world, we see these things and we immediately think of children or old people, older people, whatever you want to say. And we associate them with that. But we associate them with that, because the old people, for example, because the people that used them back in the 50s and 60s, well, now they are old. Okay? So it's just what they used. I don't know, when I'm 75, 80 years old, I don't think I'm going to go out and buy a you know, $200 Calcutta bait caster just to go out and blast it across the water. I'd use what I know how to use and what's easy to me. I like these things because of their history. I like them because of their history that I have with them. So I don't think these were built and designed to corner the market for children and old people. They were built for adults that wanted to go fish but just really didn't have the fishing ability or skills to fling a bait caster like this or wanted to deal with a spinning reel. This was easy. Very much so. It was just technology. That's all it was. It was technology that came into a time frame where there was a hole where it was lacking that technology. This filled that hole. So, again, when people say, hey, stop using those kids and old people reels, well, that ain't gonna happen. And I believe when these things were built, they weren't trying to corner the market for kids and old people. So, I enjoy using them. I thank you guys for watching. I hope that uh, this video was fun. The next thing that we're going to do is take this reel and another reel that I have over here, the Zebco ZD2 Delta. We're gonna take that thing out and see what we think about that because the hearsay is, it's better than the new Delta. Anyway, thank you guys for watching and we will see you on the next one. Whatever the next one may be. It is noisy. I think it'll work though. I think it should be fine. Boop, can you hear that? I hear your ears. See your ears when I do that.